Hey, this is Jewel Taker from the Jewel Taker Show on Impact Network. Also, you can watch me and my family on The Tankers on Prime Amazon or watch me and my sister's Chatter Talk Show on Fox. So me and my girls, Dr. Dee Freeman, Monique Islet Mosley, Real Talk Kim, and Holly Carter. And you're watching Rudy Radio. You're listening to Talk With Radio, powered by Rude Rangers Entertainment. I'm Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema Organization. And this is Talk With Tara, a show that highlights fantastic filmmakers, artists, and entertainers, and entrepreneurs, politicians from all walks of life. We're committed to introducing you to individuals, organizations, and projects of which you're not necessarily aware and we do this with the intention of uplifting, empowering, and enlightening you. If you can, please share this episode on all your social media. We love it if you text your friends and ask them to tune in. Today, audience, you are in for an amazing treat. We have a very powerful woman. She is a shero. She's known to many of just by her acts of kindness, her advocacy, powerful, powerful women. And I am so glad that God put us uh, together in this era, in this time. And her light is just an amazing shine uh, for all who come into her sphere. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ambassador Sue J. Johnson Cook. Hello, Ambassador. How are you? I'm wonderful, and it's such a pleasure to be with you because you also shine your light all over the world. So it's good with light meets light. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that is absolutely awesome. Ambassador, you know, I would like the audience just to hear uh, briefly of your journey Uh into your ambassadorship and then uh, want to share with them uh, just more aspects of your life, which I find extremely fascinating. Well, you know, I'm a native New Yorker, Harlem girl, raised in Harlem in the Bronx. And so my parents were Southerners. Uh, and so they came up through the black migration in the late 50s, as many black families did. And so their children represented kind of new beginnings, new opportunities. And that's exactly what happened for me. So that the world became my stage at a very young age. Um, at mm -hmm. the age of 14, my parents let me go to Spain and study abroad um, in 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And I think once you land in a place that, you know, not your home corner, uh, 165th <laughs> you kind of say, wow, you know, there's life, there's life. And so I, I had a hunger for being on the global stage from that point on. Uh, little did I know I would be part of, you know, President Obama's ambassadorship, but the, the road to it was through ministry. I was a pastor of congregations, mm -hmm. three congregations in New York. Then I was a White House fellow with President Clinton. And then I was mm -hmm. served at Harvard. And it was just all of those points, the relationships that were developed uh, through ministry, through government, uh, through academia, that kind of led me to the Clinton administration, which led me then later to the Obama administration. And so that was an appointment that um, I was so honored to have, nominated by Secretary Clinton and appointed mm. by President Obama. And it's been an awesome, awesome journey. Wow, that is incredible incredible so then what drew you into media well i went to emerson college um in boston <laughs> and i was oh. a media well, they called it mass communications back then they didn't separate it into journalism and production so you kind of learned a little bit of everything 
and I became a black producer um, of television. Wow. I got hired like right on the spot over the over the telephone um, <laughs> by WJLA TV, and it was from that experience that you know. Um, I worked for five TV networks before I was called into ministry. And so again, wow. relationships and media uh, remain strong. There's friends, friends that I work with at WJLA, eight of us are still best friends. And that was now 40 plus years ago. So uh, relationships matter and they mean everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Well, I'm super excited to share with the audience that one of your films, uh, which is a very powerful documentary that it was screened at the Cannes Film Festival this year. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, and I think that's another point in terms of the relationships that you mm -hmm. gave me an opportunity. You know, it was African-American women in cinema, Tara Renee, <laughs> who um, <laughs> got out this film to the Cannes Af uh, Pavilion Afrique. And it was a mm -hmm. three-minute short film that had won first prize in the uh, Tokyo Film Festival two years prior. And mm -hmm. you joined. Uh, we joined forces together and collaborated. And it was the dynamic duo that got it to, you know, Pavilion Afrique. And I think that that's the importance of, you know, relationships and collaboration. Because we could have just mm -hmm. said, okay, I won first prize in this Tokyo Film Festival. <laughs> and put it to bed. But you were like, no, there's still life in this film. And it takes <laughs> someone who knows filmmaking to help. And so mm -hmm. I want to thank you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. It's been incredible. And, and just we're so amazed by the opportunity. Oh, that is good. That is good. I want to uh, talk about what the film was about because I did not know, uh, and this is, I mean, true naivety on my end, uh, a number of things that the pow this powerful document, even though you said, you know, it was three minutes, it was very, very strong in its content. And it highlight a variety of just important uh, piece of history. Number one, the uh, number of people of color that was uh, affected by 9-11, talks about 9-11. I did not realize uh, that the um, one of our major departments here in the city uh, brought on chaplains. And that again, that's my naivety. Can you speak to that, Ambassador? Well, you know what? I didn't even know there were chaplains for New York City Police Department when I was hired. <laughs> I used to, I was a pastor of a congregation a block away from police headquarters called Marinus Temple Baptist Church. It was my first pastorate. It's the oldest Baptist wow. church in the American Baptist churches. And I was the first woman to, pa black woman to pastor like this traditional church. And so mm. I used to form, you know, when your church isn't growing, you kind of use all of your skills and gifts. And so I created <laughs> this lunchtime ministry. And at lunchtime on Wednesdays, we had people coming from all the city agencies, the police headquarters, corporate America, piling into this church. Sometimes we had over a thousand people at lunchtime for a half an hour service. And it was because there wow. were police personnel that sat in that service that went back to the first black commissioner. His name was Ben Ward. And they said, Commissioner Ward, we have a weekday pastor. So you need to make her a chaplain for the police department. And these women, they were black, they were white, they were Latino. They they worked uh, commission award until a year later, he offered me the position and wow. the rest was history. So I was there for 21 years, first black, first female chaplain and the mm. only female chaplain at ground zero. Wow. That's so you have, you have what we call this, this first, you have uh well, since you're talking about ministry, you have the breakthrough anointing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess God said she can handle all of these rough cats that ain't ready. You know? Because nobody's ready when you're a trailblazer. Nobody's saying, come in, come in. Everyone is like, you're not going to get in. You're not going to get in. And then you're in. And so they're like, oh, okay. Well, she's in. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like, uh, I guess God can trust you with uh, trailblazing. And there's certain people who, who have that ability. So it's been an honor to serve. Wow, that is great. One of the things that the, high, uh, the film highlighted was the level of, or the amount of women of color uh, operators 
that was in action on that day on 9 11, unfortunately. You want to talk a little bit about that? I'd love to because we're getting ready to honor them. There were black women, many, many women of color, but there were five black women, especially who are still working for the police department, who were on the phones trying to you know, have rescue operations, recovery operations, mm. trying to get units to people, trying to save lives, talking to people who were actually burning alive and jumping to their deaths. And so they were the first and the last voice that many people heard. And they have been so loyal to our city and have served. They're the hidden figures, you know, that Mm -hmm. they're the hidden figures of our community. And so I was like, unless we tell our story as you do with Mm -hmm. film, then no one's going to know about them. So I'm, you know, creating this luncheon where we're going to honor them in the community by community mm. people, and they're going to be queens for a day. They've been queens for 20 years. Wow. And, uh, you know, they're going to be queens, and we want them to be celebrated. You know, the, mm-hmm. the occasion is sad, of course, but mm-hmm. the first-line responders have to be mm-hmm. celebrated, just like the doctors and nurses during COVID and just like police officers during 9-11 and, uh, mm-hmm. and ambulances and firefighters. Well, they were on the front lines too. They just were not seen. And I think it's mm-hmm. important that we have these unsung Shiro stories told. I agree. I agree. Uh, what was some of your um, journey in creating this film? And, and certainly I hear the passion uh, in describing these unsung uh, sheroes and uh, grateful now that they definitely get the recognition that they reserve. But what was um, in your journey in creating the film? Uh, how did you come across to wanting to include that? And what were some of the highlights uh, in the making of this documentary? Oh, I'd love to tell you that. So I, I would love to tell you more. Can we do it after the break? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we'll be right back after these messages. You'll listen to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. International Formula One driver. I spent to get to Long Island Telecom before they closed. I need to get one of these fantastic deals that Long Island Telecom has because you can't beat the price anywhere else. Oh, get away from that car. What are you doing? Freaking kids playing with the car out there. Anyway, I'm glad I got here. Wait, what do you mean you're closing? I got to come back tomorrow? What's your number? 631-833-9679? Oh, stop writing me a ticket. We're having a conversation with African-American filmmakers. Join the African-American Women in Cinema Filmmaker Series at the Clubhouse. Presented by I Am the Color of Beautiful Global. Every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. AAWIC on Clubhouse. Join us on the Clubhouse app for this inspiring conversation. Hosted by Karen Moore, founder of I Am The Color of Beautiful Global. Join us this Monday at 6 p.m. on the Clubhouse app for African American Women in Cinema's Filmmaker Series. Hey, this is Jewel Taker from the Jewel Taker Show on Impact Network. Also, you can watch me and my family on The Tankers on Prime Amazon or watch me and my sister's Chatter Talk Show on Fox. So me and my girls, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Monique Islet Mosley, Real Talk Kim, and Holly Carter. And you're watching Rudy Radio.
Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we are talking with the fabulous ambassador, Susan Johnson Cook, who is just sharing the insight, jewels and gems of her amazing journey and how she is affecting uh, this world with her positive light. And Ambassador, you were just sharing with us prior to us going on break, the what, what you felt were the highlights in the creating of the film and uh, what brought you to the decision to include the unsung heroes uh, in 9-11. Well, you know, the, the decision to do the film was because I was given an opportunity. You know, we talk about, um, you know, lifelong learning, basically. And so I mm -hmm. knew television and I knew production, but I also knew it in the 80s and the 90s, which is a whole different era than the 2020s. And so I invested in this um course it was called women's media summit in california and so i flew all the way to la it was a one-day summit but i was in the room with filmmakers and people who are doing are modern day filmmakers and i sat next to a woman who was like you know i do documentaries and so the shereen Tabor was the woman who called this summit together and she says well i just got a grant because we're looking for more filmmakers in religious freedom which is the area you wow. are working in with government and so you know i can help you find a filmmaker i can help you find you know a production team um if you can provide the content and the acting and i was like i can do that and so we, it was an all female team. And then the next call I got was like, you know what? You won first prize. And so wow. the, the ability to tell our stories, the opportunity to tell our stories is, is so monumental. And um, so that was what got me into filmmaking. And then I got bit by the bug and then I met you. And it's <laughs> like, oh, wow, we can do more and more films where we can tell more of our stories. So that was a three minute short. Now we have a 10 minute mm -hmm film and you know it does not yet appear i mean you and i are going to do a feature film we're going to hollywood and do the red carpet you know so yeah. that, i want i want my emmy and oscar i want the whole thing baby. <laughs> and you will get it and you will get it that is so awesome what words ambassador you know now we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of this terrible tragedy that have happened uh and uh so any words of uh, inspiration uh to those who may be listening and uh any other uh you know insight that you want to give to our listeners well first of all you know my condolences certainly was the worst tragedy any of us have had, had had to experience and particularly new yorkers because we never thought that the rug would be pulled from under us and then it was mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, my message is to have holding on power, stay in power. The greatest message is that we were able to have faith through all of this and that, mm -hmm. you know, we had someone to fall back on. And so whoever you believe, however you believe, it's important to connect uh, because mm -hmm. it was a faith journey. The 911 operators said it was faith that got them through. I know as a chaplain, it was faith that got me through. And every time I appeared, whether it was at ground zero or in somebody's home or at, at headquarters, they were like, can you pray? Can you, can you lead mm. worship? And it was the faith that was the thread that kept us grounded and glued. And so mm -hmm. I say have holding on power, have stay in power, um, you know, make sure that you don't let go. Just don't let go of one another. Don't, because our city came together in a way that it had never come together because mm -hmm. of this tragedy. And so it should not mm -hmm. take a tragedy for us to come together. And I, so my message to the nation is, you know, we all have gone through COVID globally. Now it shouldn't mm -hmm. take another pandemic. It shouldn't take a variant. It shouldn't take a tragedy for us to know that we are the human race and that's what mm -hmm. we have to start moving at. So, uh, that's my message. Let's be one. Let's move as mm -hmm. one. Uh, let's forgive and ask forgiveness for those who have yeah. oppressed us. Um, mm -hmm. But let's, we've got to pick up and we have to be the human race. And I believe that's when God smiles and that's when my soul smiles. 
Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And how could our audience uh, follow you on social media and be of support to what you're doing? Oh, thank you. So my website is drsujay.live and that sujay is spelled S-U-J-A-Y dot live. There you can communicate with me. Um, if you want me for speaking, my company is charismaspeakers.com and you can get a message to me that way. But on social media, uh, IG is, you know, where everybody's DMing everybody. That's the <laughs> you know. And uh, so it's a uh, Ambassador underscore Sujay, S-U-J-A-Y again, Ambassador underscore Sujay. And you can DM me, follow me, and it leads to all my social media, Facebook. I have a YouTube channel, again, YouTube.AmbassadorSujay. <laughs> and uh, all of my uh, messaging is coming through there. That's my brand. And I'd love to stay connected with folk. And if you send me a message, I do reply. Uh, I've been on summer vacation for the whole summer and I'm rested. That's good. And just coming <laughs> off, awesome. just came off for you, Tara. <laughs> but, but, but I, well, thank I, you. I, after Tuesday, my, they can reach me Tuesdays through Friday, 10 to 4, again at ambassadorsujay at gmail.com. That is so awesome. So, Ambassador, what can we expect next? Uh, what do you have coming down the pipe that you can share with us? Well, well, coming down the pike, we have, you know, a, an appreciation luncheon for the 911 operators. Um, at, it's going to be a Canaan Baptist Church in Harlem uh, from 12 to 2 on September 10th. And hopefully we'll be able to videotape it. Because of COVID, we couldn't make it one of the big bashes that I normally do for my unsung heroes. But we definitely mm -hmm. want the public to see these amazing five women who are celebrating. Um, I'm working with, I'm the head of the Global Black Women's Chamber of Commerce which awesome. uh, brings together black women business owners filmmakers included and we have a connection and a collaboration and we're helping black women create businesses and sustain them and also scale them and lastly mm -hmm. you know my company is charisma speakers and so mm -hmm. we are uh, we provide keynotes kicking keynotes and consulting and coaching so i'm going to be going to an online course because there are a lot of people who have pivoted since covid who want to you know, really make speaking a career or think that they can. And so you can learn from the best and you, you can look out for my online course at charismaspeakers.com. So that's coming up and it's going to be a busy fall, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> well, that is great. That is great. You know, um, Ambassador, since you talked about the online uh, courses and a lot of businesses, because you're right, of COVID had to pivot on the online and i'm hearing the fact that some uh speakers and some business owners entrepreneurs they are kind of still a little nervous about the whole online space and embracing it as a now new in some instances a total new business model what do you say to those who are uh hesitant about making that type of transition they are holding out uh, for us to get back to pre-COVID. What, what would you say to those type of people? Nothing in history goes backwards. You go back, mm. you're, you're in the Left Behind series. I say get on Clubhouse <laughs> and learn from these millennials who are not only making money, but they are doing global business because what is happening with these new apps is that people all over the globe can tap in because it they're awake somewhere in the world and they're mm -hmm. making you know business deals they're collaborating and the other thing i say is what i'm doing is adding i like the live um in-person calls that i add to mm -hmm. my online courses a lot of the new persons you know particularly the younger ones just put the course up and you take it at your leisure but i think mm -hmm. it's important particularly in the speaking business for you to have the contact with someone who kind of helps you measure your growth and gives you feedback. So with my courses, I'm adding, I'm insisting with my course designers <laughs> that you put in there a live call. If it's once a week, no matter where they are in the course, it's helpful mm -hmm. to them to hear the techniques and the, and the critiques, the positive critiques that help them to grow. And I don't think online can ever substitute that, 
But if you don't mm-hmm. get with the online program, you will be in the Left Behind series and <laughs> you'll be like the dinosaurs. You'll be extinct and your businesses will be <laughs> extinct and you'll be saying, why didn't I jump on board when I could have? And, you know, it's like I said, with lifelong learning, I'm on a Zoom every day trying to learn this stuff. I want to, uh, even though I hire someone else to do it, like, and we have mm-hmm. Rudy, Rudy here who's wonderful, but I want to mm-hmm. know what my brand is doing. I want to know if a person's having a problem, why they're having that problem, because my name is attached to it. And I Mm -hmm. want my brand to always be of excellence and authenticity. Mm -hmm. I'm not just trying Mm -hmm. to make money from you. I'm trying to help you uh, transform your life in a way that you desire for it to be transformed. And I think you have to have some, a personal touch for that. And so call me a boom, an old boomer, but (laughs) boomers have booming businesses. (laughs) That is correct. I understand also ambassador that you have a new book out. I do. Um, And I think we're going to be able to talk about it in a new break. We have time for another break. And so if you can kind of get us into that segue, we can come back. I'm going to tell you about all my new books. Oh, wonderful. Well, uh, we'll be right back after these messages. You'll listen to Talk with Tara, powered by African-American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. I'm Dan O'Shea, Executive Director for Maureen's Haven Homeless Outreach. It is our mission to support the homeless in our community. We provide an emergency winter shelter program, a day center, and support services to help the homeless in our community. With your help, we can continue to provide services so critically needed to the homeless in our community. Please visit www.maureenshaven.org or call us at 631-727-683. Welcome back to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema. I'm your host, Tara Renee, and I hope that you're enjoying this conversation as much as I am. Please be sure to share this with your social media friends. We have the phenomenal ambassador, Susan Johnson Cook, who is giving us incredible insight and knowledge about what she has gained through her journey and her experiences as being a global, powerful advocate for many. Ambassador, please tell us about this incredible book that you have available now. Well, thank you so much. Well, two books are coming up at the same time, but the one just published is called Rhythms of Rest, 40 Devotions Mm. for Busy Women. And each year I give a transformational retreat for Christian women. It's a faith-based retreat. It's called Selah by the Sea. And the word Selah comes from the scriptures. It means to pause, Mm -hmm. to reflect, to just take some downtime. And so I take 40 women away every year, uh, usually to Florida, and they invest in their rest and success. And so Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, one of the publishers of Our Daily Bread, The Voices Collection, her name is Joyce Dinkins, came with us and she was part of the retreat and she was like, you know, I can publish books and why don't we have everyone here do a devotional? And so two years later, the book is published and most of the authors are first time authors. And so they're excited. So it's released. It can be found on Amazon Rhythms of Rest, uh, 40 Devotions for Busy Women. And it just speaks from the heart and soul of women, uh, to mm-hmm. women, for women, about women, by women. And so we love that. And then next month, a book will be coming out called My Fabulous Fifth Chapter 
it's my turn now. And it's talking about <laughs> women who have, from the middle of life, what they call midlife, forwards <laughs> so we're not having midlife crises we're having midlife crises we you know we're tapping into our faith and we're doing some fun things that we've always wanted to do now that the children are grown and and you know mm -hmm. some of us have had to care for parents and children so what do you do when it's your turn what do you want to do so it's about having faith and fun and having the funds f-u-n-d-s to be <laughs> able to have a good what they call golden years life and so mm -hmm. it's coming out on judson press it'll be available from october 15th also on amazon but I, you know, like I said, my audience is now boomers and I'm not mm -hmm. ashamed of it. I'm, I think we're blessed if you live long enough, but what do you mm -hmm. do with the time you have? You know, who do you pour into and how do you pour into yourself and, and get and replenish yourself with all that you've poured out over the years? So it's time to have some fun and I'm looking forward to both books and I hope people will get them and look, listen out for them. That is true. Well, we're, we're definitely excited about that. And okay, audience, uh, get in line immediately when these books uh, become available. Ambassador, who inspires you? Besides you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have like several circles of friends, you know, so where I live in the summer is a wonderful, it's called the Village of Sag Harbor. And we have Sag mm -hmm. Harbor sisters that we, you like, we move together. Like, you know, one say, we're going to the beach today and all seven of us show up. And then one will say, wow. I'm having a barbecue today and all seven of us show up and, and we bring each bring something and we just enjoy being together. Or I'll say, I'm having a pool party. My pool is open. <laughs> and, you wow. know, then the whole community shows up, the seven plus whoever is in their households. So, so, that's inspirational for me. I have inspirational surroundings. I live in places, mm -hmm. whether it's my summer place or my year round, I always live in places that are, feel like home, that are loving, that are open, mm -hmm. that are warm, that provide me inspiration. Um, mm -hmm. And then I surround myself with, even with my colleagues, business colleagues, like I guess I'm just too old to have drama, you know? <laughs> so people, people who are drama free <laughs> inspire me. Um, <laughs> Because I'm like, as a pastor for 40 years, I mean, I've mm. listened to so many problems and challenges mm -hmm. and help people mm -hmm. through journeys. You know, so at mm -hmm. this point, like, you know, you don't want to be cold and say, I really don't want to hear it. But you know what? I really don't want to hear it. <laughs> like, you know, I just... I'm like, is, has God does, done anything good for you lately? I'm kind of with people who just kind of just say, you're like, I'm glad to be alive. You know, I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. I want to help people. Mm -hmm. I want to be mm -hmm. in good space. And so that gives me inspiration. And then I read good stuff, you know? So I think mm -hmm. it's about your surroundings, both people and places, the things you do that bring you joy. I'm um, swimming for mm -hmm. me now at this age. If I could swim every day, I would. Um, and wow. I swim, I take my bathing suit on the road and I ask the hotel if you have a pool, an indoor pool in the winter. Um, so those are the things that bring me joy. And those are the things I call it soul care. You know, we just saw this mm -hmm. movie summer of soul, which was excellent. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. said, this was my summer of soul care. How do you take care of yourself and particularly your soul so that you can be good for something? Wow. That's amazing. I think I need to do that, uh, ambassador on a whole nother level. I can't swim though. <laughs> Okay, okay, but you can just like yesterday we had water aerobics, you know, Zumba. And so oh. you go to the part that comes up to your waist and you do the moves. But, you know, just find a place that's soothing, even if it's just laying on the beach or laying by mm -hmm. the pool. But whatever brings you joy, like some like the mountains, some like skiing. I like swimming. Mm -hmm. So kind of, you know, sit down for a minute and say, you know, other than looking at films, <laughs> which what else do I like to do? Um, and take mm -hmm. a break from your everyday norm and do something that's not your everyday norm. And then say, this is what makes me feel good. My soul sings, you know, mm -hmm. from doing mm -hmm. this. And I think that that's what's important. Wow, that's great. And I agree with you uh, because the times that I have taken uh, off my beaten path, it was really refreshing. Mm -hmm. And certainly I was able to come back in fuller force 
and achieve more. So I certainly appreciate that. A you have bit to come of to advice. our retreat next year. It's June twentieth to the twenty third. Then now they're luxury. I mean, you're investing in four days of luxury and professional and personal development. But I believe mm -hmm. we should, you know, we work hard through painful situations. Sometimes mm -hmm. our pay is short so that you should have pleasure and you have to learn how to play <laughs> again. So I said, we know how to pray, but do you know how to play? And so it's mm -hmm. a play date with adult women who just know how to have fun. So I'm going to hold you to that. And hopefully you'll come to Selah by the Sea next June. That sounds like a plan, Ambassador. That sounds like a plan. You could certainly add my name to it, to All the right. list. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love excellent, it. excellent, excellent. So, you know, we're... Mm -hmm. We're looking uh, again, you know, to all the great projects that you have, your books. I'm certainly looking for uh, for to go to Selah by the Sea next year. Yes. Uh, I think I'll be ready for that uh, in so many ways. <laughs> yes, we'll be ready for you. <laughs> and I will certainly, you know, uh, we look forward to your honoring of these heroes on uh, coming up. I think that's phenomenal. And, yes, these and you're going to are... be one of our honorees too Because I think it's important that people understand It's not only um, being inspired But it's the pe celebrating also the people who keep us inspired Through all seasons You know, we had 9-11, we had COVID But you, Tara, are also one of the honorees And I want people to know that Because you're phenomenal You inspire filmmakers and you and you keep us inspired with your films and i think it's important to honor you also as an unsung hero so i want people to know friday separate september 10th uh 2021 uh, we're also honoring tara renee and other community leaders who have kept us inspired in addition to these five women who are at 9-11 Ground Zero. So thank you for being a Shiro. Thank you for having me on your show. I know we're close to the time, but I just, you know, really appreciate all that you did and all the shows you had us on. You know, my three minute short film that went global, you had us on all these shows talking about it. And so the world has seen this three minute film called A Different Way. And so I thank you. So you inspire me and I hope that this our time that we shared together inspired you and those who are listening. Well, thank you, Ambassador. So well said. I deeply and humbly appreciate you and appreciate the honor and the uh, just what you've given me. I, I am just so humbled by it. I don't know where the time went, but they're telling me that we have to go. Yes. Thank you so much listening. <laughs> Again, thank you, Ambassador, for being our wonderful and honored guest. It was certainly a joy uh, speaking with you today. I want to thank uh, the listening audience so much for listening to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from the African American Woman in Cinema Organization. You can visit us at www.aawic.org. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Talk with Tara is made possible by Root Rangers Entertainment. Our creative director is Rudy J. Breedy. Please don't forget to like and share this episode with as many people as possible. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today and wish you continued peace, blessings, and prosperity. See you next episode.